Hello everybody. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, trapezoidal rule as a method for graphical integration. Uh, I'm going to start the video with a quick introduction to the topic and the calculations before going ahead and using Microsoft Excel to do these calculations. So uh, the graphical integration is one of the methods that we use to evaluate an integral of a function um, using tabulated data, uh, not using the function as a function or doing mathematical manipulations to a function to um, convert it into an algebraic equation or by using numerical integration. It's, it's using tabulated data. And let's say we have a function um, that is uh, f of x dx. Um, and I want to evaluate the value of this integral for the values of x from x1 to x2. Uh, if this is the function f of x, then the, the integral equals the area under the curve uh, of f of x on y-axis against x on x-axis for the range of x1 to x2. Um, this is a well-known mathematical fact, so uh, this is the base of the uh, methods that we are going to uh, talk about. Uh, so there are many methods that we use to do these calculations. Um, but let's say we have we have this this uh, curve that we just mentioned before. And we, these, these are the data that we have. Um, there is a missing, missing row here, which is x5 and f5. But anyways, so we have this data and we have already put them on the graph. And then we draw, we drew this, uh, this curve of this function. Uh, so the, the integral is going to be the sum of a1 and a2 and a3 and a4, uh, which is integral of f of x dx from x1 to f5. Uh, we will notice that we have uh, five data points and we have four areas. So the number of data points is one more than the areas that we have. Um, and. Uh, there are many methods that we can use to calculate the area uh, of each one of these uh, parts. Um, and the, the difference between the methods that do the graphical integration is basically in the way of doing the area calculations. The method that we're going to talk about today, which is the trapezoidal rule, is based on the assumption that all these areas are, tra are trapeziums. So uh, I'll go back here just to uh, notice the difference. So I, I just want the, you to take a look at this side of each one of these areas. So it's curve here because the function is a curve function. So it's not a straight line. So this is a curve, this is a curve, a curve and a curve. Trapezoidal rule assumes that these are straight lines. Um, and by based on this assumption, all these shapes will end up to be trapeziums. And it's easy to calculate the area of a trapezium using the middle base by height uh, fact. It's a kind of geometric thing that's known in the elementary school. So it's the sum of F1 plus F2 uh, divided by 2, which is the middle base, multiplied by the difference between X1 and uh, X2 and X1. So this is the, the A1, the same, which, which is this equation. The same can be applied to A2 and A3 and A4. And the integral will be the sum of all these areas. It's kind of simple and uh, straightforward method, and it's easy to calculate. Uh, it's, it's also uh, important to notice or to uh, keep in mind that this is uh, not accurate in many cases. So take a look at this part. There is a difference between the actual shape of the curve and the straight line that we drew here. In some cases, it's not a big difference, uh, but in many cases, it is a big difference. Um, if the curve is, is very steep or the shape of the curve is very irregular, uh, then it's very probable that the straight line is not going to be close to the, the, the original curve. Um, one, one thing that is sometimes used to minimize the, the difference is to use the smaller increments between x's. So x1, x2 are close together so that we don't have that big difference in the values. But again, this is uh, based on the available data. And in some cases, you cannot uh, predict this data or you have to get the data manually and then use them to do the integration. Um, anyway, so now as, as, as a general form, uh, this is what we're going to do. 
for the uh, some cases which may may be even simpler to uh, do the calculations is when the increments are constants so x2 minus x1 equals x3 minus x2 equals x3 uh, x4 minus x3 equals x5 minus x4 so these are equal in 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 all the areas in this case we can take them as a common factor and then the which is delta x and then the shape would be like this uh, it's f of x1 plus f of x5 plus 2 multiplied by all the rest of the f's in between the first and the last uh, or, or this might be the general form that we can use Okay, so I, I would like first to, uh, before going to Microsoft Excel, to uh, give an example uh, which is related to chemical engineering to just uh, feel that this is uh, relevant. Um, so one thing is uh, that's that's very uh, very good example is the pitot tube. Pitot tube is one of the methods or the uh, equipment that we use to uh, calculate the velocity of the fluid in pipes. Um, and its its idea is very simple and it's a very very simple equipment it's just a tube that is uh, coming from one part of the uh, of the pipe and it takes a u shape either from the top or from the bottom and this is a manometer this is an inverted manometer it can be a regular manometer if it's going down and then it goes back here at some point inside the tube and <clears throat> it takes this shape and what happens is that the flow goes uh, as it goes and uh, with whatever velocity it's going with and at this point the flow will stop because there is no way it's gonna go uh, inside um, it's gonna fill the tube at one, uh, until the height of the manometer is uh, is constant uh, it's not changing and once it's constant now the velocity here is zero and what and the, because the velocity is zero the pressure is higher here at this point than the surrounding because of Bernoulli equation the conservation of energy the velocity uh, energy is converted into pressure energy and that's why you'll see that the manometer at this part is higher here than it is here uh, and by applying Bernoulli equation between point one and point two we can uh, get rid of the z's because they both are, are at the same height and v2 equals to zero so I can now calculate v1 based on the difference in pressure which I can calculate from the difference in the height um, of the manometer so V uh, is going to be 2 multiplied by delta P over rho G. Uh, so it's, it's kind of very simple. Once you have the delta difference in pressure and the density of the flow, you can calculate the velocity immediately. It's not going to take any time. But there is one drawback uh, on using this method, which is that you are getting a local velocity. You're not getting the average velocity in the pipe, um, which means that if you change the P to tube, uh, location or position uh, up or down uh, so it's gonna be at another radius and we know from fluid mechanics that the velocity takes this parabolic shape and this means that the velocity here is different from here different from here different from here so the velocity that you are calculating is a local velocity um, and to get the flow rate you have to get the average velocity or to uh, get different values here and from the values at different radii you can uh, you can get the uh, the flow rate uh, and, and this is what happens and this is what we see in this table in the right we have here different radii and at, at each radius we have the velocity in meter per second and you see at radius equals zero which is in the center line of the tube the velocity is maximum value and it gets slower and slower and slower until it it reaches the side of the pipe and because of the no slip boundary condition it's the well known uh, thing in fluid mechanics that the velocity at the wall equals zero um, and this is why the velocity here equals zero now we need to use this tabulated data to get the flow rate the flow rate equals the integration of vda um, and the dA equals 2 pi r dr because the area is pi r squared so the integration is 2 or differentiation of the area is 2 pi r dr so this is the dA um, I just want to remind you of the shape of the function it is f of x dx so there is dx and anything else would be in the f of x part so this is what we have here 
this I, I rearranged this equation in this form to keep it in the f of r dr so i just put f of uh, dr here and the rest of the parameters here as 2 pi r v so this is what we call f of r um, so this is important to keep in mind because this is how we are gonna do our calculations is to use this shape of the equation now let's go to microsoft excel and take a look and see how we can uh, we can use the data to calculate the flow rate. So this is the Q equals uh, integration of 2 pi r v dr. And this is, these are the data. I, I'll just move this here um, because I want to do one thing which is quite important and it's very, very critical. And it's a very common mistake that people forget, which is uh, making sure that the units are homogeneous. The radius here is in centimeters and the velocity is a meter per second. So I have to make sure that this is in uh, the same units of the velocity. So these are the, ra the radius um, in uh, meters, and this is the velocity in meter per second. And now we will, uh, the next step is to calculate this part, which is the integration of 2 pi r dr, which I'm going to call f of r, um, which equals 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the r um, multiplied by the v. Uh, so this is the f of r, 2 pi r v. Um, it's, it's already calculated from, from each one of them, so I, know I don't need to freeze any, any part. And now the last thing is, or not the last thing, the, the next step is to calculate the q. Um, again, we mentioned that the number of areas that we're going to calculate equals the number of points minus 1. Um, let's put the... Uh, Oops, uh, I just want to put the equation here so it's easy for us to use. Um, so it's f of x1 plus f of x2 divided by 2. Um, it equals 2 f of r1 plus f of r2 uh, two plus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by the difference in x, which is this minus this. So this equation is exactly the same equation as this. Um, all what I need to do is to um, drag it and it's going to be calculated automatically for all the points here. And this is one nice, nice thing about this is that it doesn't matter how many um, uh, uh, how many points you have. And I, I haven't uh, freezed any, any, uh, any cells here. So uh, you're going to write the equation 1, drag it, e even if it's 100 times, it doesn't matter. And finally, we can calculate the Q from the sum. Uh, it's one, one nice shortcut that, uh, that I use a lot, which is to do sum of the cells. So I, I press Alt uh, plus the equal, and it does the sum automatically of the cells, either uh, if it's uh, above or to the left or to the right. So it, it kind of does the most uh, relevant to it and, and you can pick whatever uh, cells that you want. Um, so I did the sum and now this is the area which is, uh, or the flow rate which is 0 0.0237, it is in meter cube per second and that's all. Um, you might be interested in taking a look at the velocity profile, so this is something that we can simply do by uh, by uh, doing this, so this is the velocity profile. I can um, take a look at the function itself as f of r dr. So this is the function, um, and, and this value is the area under this uh, under this function uh, or under this curve. One thing that might be um, like nice to notice is that the first and the last points of the function are zeros. And this is because one point has zero radius and the other has zero velocity. And so the f of r at one of them is zero because of the r and for the other is zero because of the v. So this is something that has to um, happen uh, if you are taking from the center line to the walls of the pipe. Um, so this is all for this video. Hope it helps and I'll see you in the next video inshallah. Goodbye.